Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. Now, one of the very first tutorials I ever made for Apple Motion was a Scribble tutorial. And I thought after all this time, I could probably improve on it. So let's take a look. Okay, for this project, I've got 19, 20, 10, 80. I'm using 24 frames a second, but you can use any frame rate you want. And I've got a duration of three seconds. And the first thing I want to do is come over to the library and just add in a background color solid. And let's come over and make it gray like this. So then I want to make a new group and I want to take my text tool. I want to type the word scribble, center align it. Let's scale it up and let's position it more or less in the center like so. So then I am going to make yet another new group. So objects, new group. And into this new group, I'm going to add a Bezier line. So let's just turn on the HUD there. I want to outline no fill. And let's just draw an actual fact. I'm just going to click there, there and there. And then I hit enter to finish it. And then I'm going to hold down the command key and just put in a nice little a curve there and another one there. Actually, let's make an S curve like that. It doesn't have to be too precise. So there we go. That's our line. Let's center it up. Let's come over to geometry and point one Y. Let's make that 960 and point four Y. Let's make negative 960 just so it's plenty long enough. So I'm actually now going to come back to my scribble group and I'm going to add some filters. So first of all, I'm going to add stylize and crystallize. Then I'm going to add blur and directional blur. And then I'm going to add color and levels. Let's just turn off that Bezier line. So I'm going to crank the crystallize speed up to two. And you can see that's giving us this rough outline. But I actually want it to be directional, and that's why I've used this directional blur. So I'm going to set the angle to 45. And let's have an amount of something like 64. And you can see that's made that crystallize a little bit more directional. But obviously, we've now got a rather blurred outline, and we want something sharper than that. So let's come to the levels and select alpha. And then let's bring these two closer together like this until we've sharpened up the outline like that. We don't want any sort of softness in it at all, really, I think. And you'll see the difference that the directional blur makes if I turn that off. You can see the crystallize is going in all sorts of different directions, but this is giving us more of a, an angled direction like that. So let's come back to our Bezier and let's now make a replicator out of it. Let's turn on this group so you can see what I'm doing and we can turn off that text group. So rectangle is good for the shape. I'm going to choose random fill. I'm going to open up the size. I want to make sure the width is nice and big. So I'm going to go with 2160 height. 300 is fine. For the points, I'm going to go with 540. Just come back to my busy line quickly and I'm going to make that black because I want black for my strokes. So. Replicator, I'm just going to adjust its angle like this. So let's go for, I don't know, maybe 30. We don't need to go all the way to 45. We might actually need to just increase the width like that, just in case we've got some text that goes really wide, but I don't think we will. So then to get our animation, we're going to come back to this Bezier here. Properties, open up the position, and we're going to target the Y, and we're going to add parameter behavior, randomize. We're going to set an amount of something like 125, apply mode of add and subtract, crank the noises all the way up to 1. And then this group with the replicator in it, I'm going to add an image mask, and I'm going to use that text group, group 1, as the source. So now if I press play, you can see we've got our effect. So if we wanted a slightly finer strokes, we could come into the outline and just reduce that down to whatever we want. I might just go with five because I also want to show you that if we come to this group here and we add stylize and extrude at the defaults that fills it all in. But let's set the angle to 225 and let's set the distance to, to something like five or something. So you can see that that 
makes it chunkier and it's it's a better way of making it chunkier than just increasing the line width i think because you can actually sort of start to really fill it in like that if you want so this becomes a really quite useful control this distance control let's have a look at that on the run and then what we can do is we can use our replicator to do a right on right off so let's select the replicator let's come to properties x position let's add parameter behavior and ramp i want to come to 11 frames on the timeline and i'm going to select mark mark out to shorten the ramp behavior and i'm going to have a start value of negative 1920 and if we look at what happens then we get that right on. Actually, that's not getting us far enough out for the purposes of this. So just increase that start value until you're clearing your text. And you can see we get that really nice sort of scribble right on. So then we could duplicate that ramp and we could move it so it finishes just there at the end and we could reverse the direction. So let's zero out the start value and have 2000 for the end value. Let's make sure that clears. Yes, it does. So then we get a write on. Well, scribble on, scribble off. Like so. So very simple effect. Obviously, you can control the color of it by coming back into this Bezier shape. So whatever color this is, is the color of the scribble. So obviously there's loads more we can do to finesse this and I have indeed made a Final Cut title template that I'm sharing with you, link in the description, that offers loads of interesting extra options. So anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.